All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm here to show you how to connect your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller 1, not the Pro Controller from the Switch 2, to your Windows 11 PC so you can use it to play all of your favorite games. So to do this, we're going to be using a program called DS4 Windows that lets us pretend that it's an Xbox 360 controller. I'm also going to show you how to pair this with your Windows PC using Bluetooth because you can get it to run over cable, but it's a little finicky, and this is the more reliable way to do it. So to start out with, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and either click the link in the video description or Google DS4 Windows, and then scroll down, not this one up here, but scroll down till you find the developers page here on GitHub, releases Ryochan 7 DS4 Windows, and from here we're going to download and install three programs. We're gonna need the .NET runtime, from Windows, Microsoft makes it directly. And what this is going to do is it's the uh, framework that makes the interface work for the program. Then we're gonna download and install the Vision Bus driver, which allows your computer to properly talk to the controller. And the final thing is we're going to install DS4 Windows itself. So let's start by grabbing the .NET framework. You can either grab the .NET framework from this page here and download the, the number eight version. I'm instead going to suggest that you upgrade to the .NET 9.0 runtime because it's the slightly newer version and probably fixes some bugs with the old version. And then once you've got this downloaded, just grab this version right here, the desktop runtime 9.0.9, .9. grab the 64-bit edition right here. And then finally, you're gonna wanna grab the Vision Bus driver from this first link here at the top on GitHub made by Nefarious Software Solutions. It's this guy right here. He makes a lot of open source software and also paid programs. You'll just wanna grab the only version of Vision Bus from the most recent version, which removed the automatic updater. There's only one version, so just grab that. And I install all of these to the same location in a nice little folder that I've made called Windows 11 Controller 2025. The last thing you wanna do is grab this top 64-bit edition zip file of DS4 Windows, just grab the one that says .zip, unless you have dot set or a 7-zip installed, in which case you can grab the .7z. I just grabbed the x64.zip. And then that's all you gotta do for the download portion. Next, we're gonna open up our Windows settings and go to Bluetooth and devices here in the left-hand sidebar. And we're going to hold our Pro Controller and on the top of it, next to where you plug it in, there is a circular button. Go ahead and give that a press for like a count of something along the lines of six seconds or more, maybe eight, depending. And then once you've done that, even if the light across from it doesn't start to blink, it should be in pairing mode. Then you can click add device and go to Bluetooth to search for a Bluetooth device. And here is our pro controller. Once you give that a click, you should be good to go and it should be paired depending on your setup and your computer. The little blue ring around the home button might start to glow. That's not something you have to worry about, it's just normal. But once that's connected and paired, it'll show up right here. You should be good to go. From there, we can open back open our little file browser where everything is stored, and you can install the .9.0 uh, framework, which I've got installed right now, and then the Vision Bus you'll also want to install after you install the .NET framework. The last thing you want to do is extract DS4 Windows to a folder of the same name. And then inside of that folder, you will find DS4 Windows here at the top. The rainbow icon is the actual software. Give it a double click and tell it you can run it. And then if everything is installed correctly, you should see a little pop-up that asks you where you want to save your DS4 Windows settings. Put them in the program folder. That makes it easier if you ever have to reset DS4 Windows from scratch or uninstall it super easy by just deleting the folder that it's in. Next, you'll be asked what type of device you're gonna be using DS4 Windows for. Primarily, it's meant to be used using a PlayStation 4 controller, which is the original purpose, but it supports PS4, PS5, Switch Pro controller, Joy-Cons, and PS3 controllers, so you have your choice. In this case, we want to unclick the first one and instead click the Switch Pro Controller. You can use it for more than one controller at the same time or all of them technically, 
But according to the developer, it cuts down on different problems that can arise if you just enable the only one that you're using and leave the rest turned off. Once you set it, tell it which version of the controller that you want to use it for, it should pop open and then automatically turn on and start running. And then it should at that point say, oh, hey, we found your controller. Here it is. We're ready to go and start playing games. And if everything's working just fine for you up until this point, you should be good to go and you can just start playing games and it'll pretend that your controller is an Xbox controller. At this time, there is no way to get the DS4 Windows to tell your computer that this is a Nintendo controller to see if your game has Nintendo controller support. So that's pretty much it for this. You can, however, rebind keys by going to edit and you can click any of these buttons and it'll, it does map to the same buttons on your controller, even though the joysticks are in a different place. Uh, you can rebind it to anything on an Xbox controller or on a keyboard. Then when you're done, you just click save. And for this to continue to function and function properly, you're going to need to leave this running in the background. If you're having trouble with the controller not showing up, you might need to connect this to a switch again if you have one, and then tell the switch inside of the touchscreen to manually disconnect from your Pro Controller. That way it's not bound to anything and it'll talk to your computer a little bit better. Um, there isn't a super easy way to reset these, but you can Google how to factory reset a Nintendo Pro Controller if you want to try that. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.